Welcome, my name is Harald Sack and this is Knowledge Graphs. Lecture number two, basic knowledge graph infrastructure. This now is the first excursion in our lecture and in this excursion we will talk about reification with RDF and RDF star. Okay, what is reification? I have a simple example for you and for that I asked our good old friend ChatGPT a single question. So who might be the literary role model for Spock, the science officer of the USS Enterprise. And this is what ChatGPT said. One literal role model for Spock, the science officer of the USS Enterprise, could be Sherlock Holmes. Both characters are known for their logical and analytical thinking, as well as their ability to remain calm and rational in difficult situations. Additionally, both characters have a strong sense of duty and a commitment to solving problems whether they be scientific or criminal in nature. So, Sherlock Holmes might be one of the role models for Spock, who serves as one of our main examples in the RDF track. If we want to express that Chat GPT has stated that Sherlock Holmes is a role model for Mr. Spock, we have somehow to make a statement about a statement. And this is something what RDF permits. So RDF also permits the interleaving of statements, which means to make statements about statements. So going back to our example, ChatGPT states that Sherlock Holmes is a role model for Mr. Spock. Let's first um, cut this thing in two pieces, so in two parts. So we have here, first one, Sherlock Holmes is a role model for Spock. So that is quite simple. If you want to translate that into some RDF structure, we would have Sherlock Holmes as a subject, role model as a property, and Spock then as an object. The difficult part then comes in the statement that this statement has been issued by ChatGPT. So we would have to say somehow that the statement has been stated by ChatGPT and we have no idea how to refer to that statement. So that statement, of course, also then also needs an identifier. We need an identifier to identify exactly that first part here of the sentence. So and if I want to make a statement about a statement, this process is called reification in RDF. I can define or I have the possibility in RDF to define a statement. So there is the keyword RDF statement and this defines an RDF statement which consists of a subject, a predicate and an object. And for that again I have three different keywords RDF subject, RDF predicate and RDF object. Therefore also property and predicate have been differentiated in RDF and we were talking and referring to that already. So you have the subject, this is the described resource, you have the original property which is then encoded via RDF predicate and you have the RDF object. So what we have to do then is we have to create an RDF statement as you see below here with Sherlock Holmes as the RDF subject is a role model that would be our pro property or RDF predicate and then we have here Mr. Spock who would be our object. How is this encoded? So here let's have a look at the according RDF graph. We have here statement one and this statement one has the subject Sherlock Holmes, has the predicate role model, has the object Spock. And this is connected to JetGPT via the predicate or the property stated by. So statement one was stated by JetGPT. And of course statement one is a statement. So this is of type RDF statement. Quite simple so far, but you see already if I want to make statements about statements, the graph is getting more difficult if I encode this via reification. Let's have a look how Turtle would see exactly that reification. So here we have a statement which is an RDF statement. Again we have here the abbreviation A, one character for RDF type. So statement one is an RDF statement. Then I close here with a semicolon which means statement one has the subject Sherlock Holmes. Statement 1 has the predicate role model and statement 1 has the object Spock. So that's already our statement and now I can say okay and this statement has been stated by JetGPT. That's it, that's our reification. 
Now you might think, so what is it good for? Of course, this is very important if you want to include provenance information within your statements. Because, as you might imagine, there are hardly any things which are one universal truth. Everybody might have another opinion about things. And for that you have to give provenance. You have to say who said what. Because, you know, some people or some statements are associated with, let's say, a different um, amount of credibility, of trustworthiness, of accuracy. So therefore it's important to make clear this statement comes from that on that source, from that reference. And one way to do that is, of course, via reification. And this gives way, of course, also to have not only one universal truth, but to have several opinions standing next to each other. And none of them, let's say, excludes the other one. So all of them might be true, but they are related to a specific source. So this is what we can model with it. And this is also why RDF reification is such an important thing. However, Besides the traditional reification structure based on RDF statement, there is also another alternative that has been proposed, which are the so-called singleton properties. What's a singleton property? So for a singleton property, what I do is I create an instance of a specific already existing property. So here, for example, I create an instance of role model, which was my original property, and call that role model hash one. And I declare this role model hash one to be a singleton property of a specific property, which is role model here. This is what I do. And then I connect here simply Sherlock Holmes is a role model hash one of Spock. And this is the singleton property. And this, since this property then has also an address that we can refer to, we can say the role model hash one has been stated by chat GPT. And by this what we are doing here is we are introducing something like a, a new entity which is called here a singleton property. And uh, this thing then connects exactly also the original statement with its object while also connecting it with an issuer, so with provenance information. So this is also one of the ways that has been proposed to model this kind of reification to make statements about statements. However, this is not necessarily standard RDF. So this is a proposal which is quite interesting. But there are more proposals and one of them is on the way of becoming also an RDF standard and this is RDF star. What is RDF star? It's a, an extension of RDF and this allows to consider RDF graphs either as subject or objects for RDF triples. So exactly what we want to do, we want to make statements about statements. So not necessarily only about a single statement, but our an entire graph. And this is exactly what RDF star allows. RDF star syntax allows to recursively embed graphs into other graphs. And if I then want to state that ChatGPT states that Sherlock Holmes is a role model for Spock, I simply create here this graph that I have here. It's only one triple. Nevertheless, it's a graph to be then one new statement in RDF star and can say then this statement has been stated by ChatGPT. It's also not very much different from what we did so far, but um, RDF star as a serialization format gives you here with turtle star a very nice way to encode this then also with less space than traditional reification. So what you are doing here is we have here our original triple. Let's have a look at that. We have here Sherlock Holmes, Role Model and Spock. And you see here two new things in Turtle Star, in RDF Star. And these are these two angle brackets. First two opening angle brackets and then we have two closing angle brackets. And if I have this opening and closing in between, I can write an entire graph. And after that graph, of course, I can make directly a statement about it and then I can fill in, let's say here, an object or I can uh, a predicate and then an object. Or also the other way around, I can use the graph here as an object. That's also not a problem. So this is, of course, only possible if you have a parser for RDF star in the traditional RDF language. Of course, this is not valid, but this is a new proposal, which is on its way to become sooner or later, as I hope so, an RDF and W3C 
recommendation for the web because this is a rather easy way to encode also then provenance information with least overhead. So then it becomes really readable and this is of course one of the things that we want to that we want to guarantee in the end. So this is RDF star. So let's summarize all that. What's the use of reification? Of course, first of all, modeling data provenance, also formalizing statements about reliability and trust, and in general to define metadata about statements. And statements here ranges from a single triple up to an entire graph that we can then also um, connect with according metadata. However, we should also always be careful. When we do pure reification, what you see there, what's happening here is that relations and classes can be transformed to instances over which I then make assumptions. And this potentially might result into type conflicts if you go for strong typing. So there is a conflict in there. On the other hand, of course, if you define self-referring structures, you might end up or you have the risk to define infinite recursions and cycles. And this is also something we definitely want to avoid because then if a reasoner is trying to, to resolve that problem, we might get lost and the problem will never in the end stop. Yeah, so that's reification. Very useful, but you should be careful when and how to use it. It always depends on the kind of application you have in mind. Okay, so far so good. Now you have learned almost everything which is there to learn about RDF and RDFS. The last thing that's still missing is, of course, there is already explicit semantics given there. When we have defined RDFS, you always saw the semantics of specific constructs, of specific properties that we have there. And based on that semantics, we will be able to draw logical inferences. And how to do that, you will see in the next lecture.